Vanderbilt Hall at Harvard Medical School in Boston, celebrating 75 years since Saul Hurst asked the critical question to Person Compton from MIT, could iodine be made radioactive artificially? Saul Hertz's daughter was just a young child when her father passed in 1950. She was told of his pioneering work in medicine, but had limited knowledge beyond that. Today, she appreciates his profound contribution to the diagnosis and treatment of thyroid diseases and the paradigm change it represents. Preserved in the attic of her childhood home were boxes of correspondence, the handwritten data charts of the very first series of patients treated with radioactive iodine, journals and newspaper articles. Here on display is Dr. Saul Hertz's work documenting him as the first and foremost person to develop the experimental data on radioactive iodine and apply it to the clinical setting. Radioactive iodine is a tracer, a treatment for hyperthyroidism and the first targeted cancer therapy. Several prominent thyroid specialists and medical historians, including Jeffrey Mifflin, archivist with Mass General Hospital, have helped to review and organize this treasure. Saul Hertz was born on April 20, 1905 in Cleveland, Ohio, to Orthodox Jews who had fled Europe. In 1929, he received his MD from Harvard Medical School, followed by an internship and residency at Cleveland's Mount Sinai Hospital. He came back to Boston to join the newly formed thyroid clinic at the Massachusetts General Hospital in 1931. It should be noted that he was a Dalton scholar and that Jewish doctors were not allowed on the staff at that time. Barbara Hertz assembled this exhibit in Vanderbilt Hall at Harvard Medical School, which is the exact location where Dr. Saul Hertz originally asked the question that began the research. She spoke with Dr. Richard Wien from Tufts Medical Center to bring to light how this discovery has impacted thyroid patients today. It was nice to get an invitation to come to this kind of an event as a surgeon, which is non-traditional, which is nice because the patients that I operate on benefit immensely from adjuvant radioactive iodine. The, the, the role that radioactive iodine plays in my patients, not only diagnostically, but also therapeutically, is huge. So for myself to see where it all started, the origins of this, and also see that it's rooted right here in Boston is, is very interesting. As much as we may do a total thyroidectomy and, and feel that we removed every bit of cancer or every bit of thyroid, it's almost like the, the analogy I make to a lot of patients is like taking peanut butter off an English muffin. You can get most of it off, but there's a little bit left behind. That little bit, that little bit of uptake is where radioactive iodine comes in to be critical as far as the treatment of patients with head neck cancer, especially thyroid cancer. During this exhibit, Barbara and also doctors Braverman and Garber had the opportunity to speak about Dr. Saul Hertz and some of the impact his work has had even today. Saul Hertz's legacy is dynamic, profoundly affecting the field of nuclear medicine, countless generations of patients, and numerous institutions. To date, more than one million hyperthyroid patients have been treated successfully. Pulitzer Prize author, Dr. Siddhartha Mukherjee, publicly thanked Dr. Hertz while explaining how his groundbreaking work established the first targeted cancer therapy. First of all, thank you for your father for inventing this. This actually saved the lives of hundreds of thousands of men and women. Um, the, the, the answer is thyroid cancer. That particular variant of thyroid cancer is very unique. Um, and it's because the thyroid happens to concentrate iodine. The thyroid happens to be a unique organ in our body which takes iodine and sucks it up and puts it inside it. It concentrates iodine. It's a little bag of iodine. And therefore, if you make radioactive iodine, it becomes like a Trojan horse. Um, and it goes into the thyroid, and the Trojan horse, and because it's carrying radioactivity, will bombard the thyroid with radioactivity and thereby cure some of these variants of thyroid cancer. So you, it's hard to imagine that exactly the same idea is going to apply to other cancers, but the principle of the Trojan horse, which is to somehow load a payload, an antibody, uh, to payload a chemical 
to get into an organ and then deliver specifically uh, toxic therapy uh, or even non-toxic therapy to that organ comes from this idea, comes from your father's, so there's a lineage. Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research is providing the most advanced biological investigation with the best engineering technology, believing they can continue to revolutionize the diagnosis, monitoring, and treatment of cancer that Dr. Hertz began in the 1940s. The seed planted by Dr. Hertz's teaching at both Harvard Medical School and MIT has grown into formal integrative programs offering dual degrees. Let us also be grateful to the courageous children and adults who took a leap of faith to participate in the initial studies and to all the dedicated doctors with their support staffs who have carried Saul Hertz's dream forward.